Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute. If you're looking for more tips or lessons with from Emily, please check out Musigy.com for all the sheet music, transcriptions, albums, books, and flute lesson packages. That's Musigy.com. M-U-S-O-G-Y.com. Also, if you're looking for posters, fingering charts, or merch, you can head over at our merch store at store.thefluechannel.com for all your flute needs. If you want to help us on a monthly basis, you can also consider joining us over at Patreon for as little as $2 a month. This helps us make more great content for you. Check the description for more info. Finally, if you're looking into buying a flute, please consider using the Flute Center of New York and use our code TFC for a 10-day trial in trying three flutes. Check the description for all the details. Now on with the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. How's it going, Emily? I'm good. How are you? Good. Just getting up uh, this early uh, Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, pieces, you know. Uh, some We're going to talk about some of your favorite popular ones, Emily, and mine too. And maybe also talk about like um, some ones that are kind of unheard of, like, maybe as well too, that you kind of give to people a lot so that, uh, you know, we yeah. explore that basically. So. Yeah, and also we'll be answering a little bit of your questions a few more minutes into the show. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what the schedule is going to be like for the summer. So, yeah. Yeah. When you, um, for instance, like let's just say, what are some of your favorite pieces that you always like to fall back on and play with first? Um, I Things that I tend to play a lot, like the mm-hmm. G major Mozart concerto, I don't know, like, you know, let's say we try flutes, like I go to that very fast or like stuff that I practiced a lot in my life, I guess, mm-hmm, will mm-hmm. come back to me. Um, yeah. So like some orchestral excerpts like uh, Peter and the Wolf or Mozart G major, stuff like that will come back, you know, quickly if I'm taking a, a piece, a flute and I want to try it or whatever, or I'm warming up. Yeah. And I realized, like, I tend to get very attached to uh, the pieces that I learned when I was young. Because back w- when you're you're younger, you have to practice so much more to master the piece. So they're really part of me, all those pieces. And, um, yeah, I have, like, a special attachment to them. Like, um, I like uh, Vivaldi's concertos a lot. Mm-hmm. And, like, you were talking about students, like, you don't need to be that advanced to play them, and they're very beautiful pieces of music. Um, and like Vivaldi was also a teacher, so I feel like there's something also to be learned in those piece, in those beautiful pieces of music. Mm-hmm. You know, it it can be a a good way to. Well, repertoire is also a good way to build your totally. your technique and everything. So, yeah, I like those yeah. a lot. And then I like like all the French, French book, uh, all those pieces, and some transcriptions too because oh, like yeah, violin transcriptions can be amazing. Um, I like Doppler a lot. All of Doppler, like for two flutes and piano mm-hmm. or for solo flute, it's so um, uh, it's like it's fun. You know, it's oh, not yeah. it's not complicated. It's just to have fun. Uh-huh. It's like just beautiful, fun music. I like that a lot. And then I like a lot of contemporary music as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Would you see like kind of go back to the Vivaldi? What you kind of sprung a little thought for me was, I even think like you were saying he was a teacher. I think even back then there was this idea of progression in learning. Mm-hmm. You think it was just like pe- people were just writing for counts or dukes or kings or whatever people were commissioning stuff for the church but they were also i think thinking oh who is going to play this um are they people that have played stuff of those people before maybe they want more of a challenge so they maybe they all communicated for all we know you know what i mean like yeah it's like uh, that um the idea of progression emperor philip the which one you know, in in, in um, Philip the Great, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, in Germany, but back yeah. then it was. Uh, oh my God! I did a whole paper about about <laughs> him because, like that that emperor in uh, in Germany, he he um, 
he was a amateur flutist. He loved the flute, and he he um, he made a lot of uh, music. Uh, Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great. Yes, sorry. sorry. No, don't be sorry. Yeah, and he he. Um, yeah, composers wrote for him, but he wasn't a professional right. flutist, so I guess they had to, you know, be mindful of that, uh, that he needed to be able to play that music, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, for Vivaldi, he was working at La Pieta, which was, um, which was um, um, for orphans, an orphanage, mm -hmm. and the girls would learn music, and um, they were very good. They oh, had amazing okay. teachers at La Pieta, okay. Vivaldi La being Pieta. one of them, and right. he would write for for them, and they would tour Europe and everything, and yeah. So, I guess he probably had some pedagogical thoughts when he was composing. Yeah, it must be. Because like he was composing for his students. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, just I, interesting to think like that. Even back then, people were thinking about that type of progression. And even of all these pieces, you can, like all the ones that, the concertos that he wrote, and some of them were transposed and stuff. You can start really from like one piece, and then gradually it gets a little bit more fun or a little bit more difficult or it has a new element. And yeah, yeah, there's different levels. Totally. And totally. like, I I think sometimes, like as a, as a teacher also, like... I, I, I tend to hear things like, oh, we need to innovate in education. And like, I, I kind of agree, like it's all innovation is always good. But we tend to think that we're inventing things that existed before. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of reinvent all the time because like <laughs> we come up with a concept that we say is new, but really it's been existing forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and like I found books of ear training that were made by nuns here in Quebec in the 1940s. And these women were geniuses of, of pedagogy. It's mm -hmm. amazing how they were teaching things, how they were uh, teaching one thing before the next, like the progression and of... the layout of it. It was... It's oh. so smart. It's mm -hmm. so well done. And, um, yeah, we tend to think, like, we're inventing things, but, like, human beings have taught before us... And, you know, not all of their things were bad, you know. It's like right now it's all about um, being uh, kind and all that. But, well, mm -hmm. that's that's the thing that we're talking about. But it existed before when I was in school. Teachers were also kind. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're just things come into um, um, fashion, you know, and then mm -hmm. we talk about it and we tend to think that we invented it. I think in education, we tend to think that a lot. But I'm sure mm -hmm. Vivaldi was also thinking about his pedagogical approach mm -hmm. as much as we do now. Yeah. Do you see... Um, let's just go back to like just pieces again. Like, Do you see even now in modern times, like when you're teaching students, do you see, do you see more people, um, more of your students rather, asking for pieces that they hear nowadays more? Like they hear pop tunes or... Uh, movies or video games and then do you also think oh okay I'll give you some of that but then I'll also give you some of the old stuff you know like do you find that there's a balance or is there some stuff that you always I think there's a balance but yeah. people still really like the classics mm -hmm. and yeah people still like the flute repertoire that has been in existence for a while but yeah people also like playing uh you know, like you said, popular songs or or um, video game music or movie music, and it's totally, it's still it's music, you know. And mm -hmm. there's always um, a value in it, even mm -hmm. a pedagogical value if if you're talking about learning something, but also a value in just the fun of playing music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we should. Um, uh, be snob about it and be like, no, you can't learn that. You have to, uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. because the point, I guess, also is that the student continues to have fun and want to play music. Mm -hmm. If you take it away from them and you make it boring or you make it frustrating, then you've lost a musician, and that's not good, I guess. You know, yeah, you want people to enjoy music and, yeah, 
Mm. That's my opinion. What do you think? No, I think along the same lines as well, too. I was just thinking more like now how we have way more access to music and new music and old music all the time that I think even new, uh, old thing, old, um, let's say old modern stuff from like movies and video games are slowly kind of seeping into the the standards almost. I feel that that might be coming yeah. soon, that the standards uh, are being replaced with some new stuff that are not necessarily written by a composer that is, um, you know, of the conservatory or of the schools of, or of this, but they're actually freelancers or they're composers that compose for a video game. And uh, mm-hmm. for instance, like there's a, a Discord that has... Um, a couple of people who are making etudes of video game music etudes, which is pretty amazing <laughs> and yeah. unheard of, you know, uh, just for fun, you know. And I think uh, that eventually is going to progress further because we also kind of need more new stuff as musicians. Like, it's cool to replay stuff all the time, but what keeps our minds fresh, I think personally, is learning new stuff, you know, sight yeah. reading as well and all these types of things. Like, I know we eventually never run out of old stuff because there's so much music, but it's cool to have new style new stuff from now mm-hmm. contemporary yeah. That's fun. and like yeah and even uh, trinity college and their new books um they have popular pieces and video game music and stuff like that you know and like you have like contemporary contemporary which is mm-hmm. like classically trained like atonal music mm-hmm. that style and then you have like from a now, but which is still tonal music and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like they're both, they're both, I think they both have a value, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's uh, finish that segment with just kind of like, maybe you want to say what are maybe a couple of your favorite pieces that you've uh, always uh, liked coming back to, including uh, other instruments, not just for the flute, but just favorite favorite tunes you like to play because mm. you also play piano as well and you tend to play a lot of uh, let's say chopin i think i stuff. love chopin yeah it's fun yeah and right now i'm working a bit on trauma like a uh rave d'amour what is, what is it a dream dreaming love dream okay trauma i know is it yeah yeah okay by list list yeah. is also amazing i like romantic music on the piano on the flute we don't have that much romantic music it's true it's true uh but we have transcriptions from violin music sometimes mm-hmm. so that that kind of does it um and like yeah some of the french composers i know they're not they're not romantic but there's some beautiful melodies there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, i would really like one day to record uh, all the um, mozart quartets okay because I, I really like them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you're string players and you want to play, contact us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Come that on. could be fun. For sure. Yeah, I'd like to do that. And, uh, yeah, and, like, we have a transcription. Like, we could transcribe some Chopin more, you know, yep. for flute. Totally. We need to There's have some... more Chopin for flute. Yeah, like... the flute complements Chopin quite well. It's quite surprising. The nocturne, you just rearrange it a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. You... You put the melody on yeah. the on the flute and boom, you have a, you know. You got something there for yeah. sure. Oh, that's cool. That's great. Well, oh, thanks for answering those. That's good. Um, now we'll go to the other part of the show where we answer some of your questions here live. Got some nice questions already, which is really cool. Um, Felicia wants to know, um, what can I do to make my double um, tonguing clearer or more equal? Okay. Um... I don't know exactly what's the issue with your double tongue because I didn't hear you, but I've noticed that sometimes some students, when they try to get faster, it becomes unequal and they go ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta. Yeah, and the ta start, starts being way longer than the ka. Um, sometimes it's because the ka is not strong enough, so I would work on the ka by itself. Mm-hmm. Just ka, 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 ka. Then also work back backwards so mm-hmm. instead of going ta ka ta ka go ka ta ka ta mm-hmm. so ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka put the accent on the ka yeah and then go back to the ta ka ta ka ta and you can practice that while doing other stuff you don't necessarily need your flute to work on that that movement because you can go yeah and just make sure you're always hearing that even and not uneven right yeah always and if be you aware. if you hear that it, it becomes uneven like 
Mm-hmm. I guess when people start to, to do it unevenly, it's because they they stress and they tense up some muscles and then things don't flow anymore. Because when I want to do it the wrong way, I have to tense up. Because when I'm relaxed, I go... But when I want to go... You see, I tense up and I block the air. The air has to just come. Yeah. The air is going out For sure. and the tongue is just cutting the air. Uh-huh. That's it. The tongue in the front, but in the back, it's not the tongue. It's like just... Yeah. You're kind of just closing the the back of the, you know, the throat. Yeah, yeah. You just go... How do you... Uh, okay. How do you feel with the, the other type of articulation for double tonguing with daga instead of taka? You know? Yeah, it's the same thing for me. For you, okay. Daga, yeah. daga, taka, taka, taka. It's just daga for, for me. Taka is a bit further away from each other. The ta is more in the front. Yeah. The ka the is more in the close, back. Yeah, the but closer. when you do daga, the da is a little bit less in the front and uh, the yeah. ga is a bit less in the back. So sometimes it can help Whoa. to go faster. Or if you want a type of articulation that's not as crisp, wow. you want something yeah. that, that's separated but with a f- more legato feel. Mm-hmm. So instead of taka, 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 you want daga, 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 daga. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. So it depends on what you're trying to express, but it gives you another, another expressive tool, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. to be able to go from taka, 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 to daga, daga, daga. Right. Ah, super interesting. So hopefully that helps you, Felicia. Um, that's yeah, but take your time and totally. remember to always blow. Because mm-hmm. I think it's when we block the air mm-hmm. that these things happen mm-hmm. too. And like, if you feel like you're getting stressed and your muscles are tensing up, maybe go back to a bit slower. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, Shamster, she, he wants to know, is that a shakukachi in the background? Have you tried playing them? And how do you see the instrument as compared to a Western flute? I practice Spencer and find it interesting to compare. Yeah, we have one. Uh, like we have a, a shakukachi, yeah. but... You haven't tried it really yet, and... Uh, I yeah. tried it a little bit, and I was not good at it. I couldn't <laughs> yeah. get a sound out. You were better than me. You yeah. got a sound out. Yeah. And but, yeah. but the bansuri is more similar to the flute, so that's like I can get a sound. Yeah. But the shakuachi, it's really different. Yeah. There's yeah. something I'm not getting there. Yeah. But I didn't try it that much. No, no, exactly. And we're going to eventually explore that it, maybe in a video and stuff, and maybe you take some lessons with some... I know there might be a shakuachi player here in town, so... Eventually, that's something that we're going to explore, because why not? <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful instrument. Super beautiful, yeah. It's just, I thought it would be a bit more similar to the flute. Uh, yeah, but it's, but a little, it's different. Mm, there's a, quite a difference, yeah. I, I feel. Yeah, exactly. And even the bansuri, it's uh, way similar to the flute than, let's say, sakukachi to the flute in, in, in a lot of ways. Like, bansuri, you can kind of just jump into it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the embouchure is way more similar. Is super, a bunch yeah. similar, and like I would say, even like air wise, I think it's almost equal, maybe even a little more sometimes with 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 ben Suri Sometimes when I play it a little bit, okay. But it's more of an effect, like the sound of of the bensuri and the air of it, all have these types of various variation qualities to it, and you can control both. You can control it. It's kind of fun, as opposed with the flute, where you're kind of thinking of notes and. And the sound kind of just stays metallic, as opposed to like Bansuri's, which are wooden, which is kind of mm-hmm. different, to- different, the... different type yeah. of color, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, what do we got here? I, Anissa wants to know, do you have any techniques to memorize a concerto? I'm trying to learn the Bear concerto, but don't know how to memorize it. We did a memorization video, but like, I think personally that I think we could explore memorization more and about how the mind works and how there's a whole kind of way to learn I think don't you think well what I know about memory is um, when you learn something you have different entry points so you have your eyes you have your muscle memory like your fingers knowing where to go and you have um, the memory of the melody like your ear your ears are another entry point. Mm-hmm. And then you also have like the structure, which is more of a understanding, like using cognition, you know, <laughs> to understand the structure. Because let's say in your concerto, you'll have 
twice the same thing. The first time it goes here and the second time it goes there. You have to make sure you don't go do the second time thing the first time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where the understanding the, the structure comes into place. Mm -hmm. But when I had to learn stuff, I personally felt like a lot of it just was the melody and the fingers going together. <clears throat> and then I would use also my, my visual memory to be like, oh, here I am on the second page, top of the page. I would know where I am. And then I had the structure in, in mind. So like using all those tools and then listen to it a lot if you can so that it, it gets into your mind. Uh, read the music in bed before going to bed because uh, sleep and memory, it, there's a lot of studies that say that learning something just before sleeping, it, it increases how you're going to retain. Uh -huh. Like bring your music in bed, read it before you go to sleep. Uh, that could be a good way. And like try to learn little pieces, you know, learn the first page by heart. Uh -huh. Then put a, a sheet on, on that page, try to play without it. When you have a little um, doubt, you go and check. You put the page back to, to hide it, and then mm -hmm. you, you yeah. know. And, yeah, I would go like that. Oh, so That's super interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, some, like, we all have different ways of, of learn of memorizing. Yeah. But those are the main things. And then you'll see which... Which is your strong suit, you know? Yeah. Is it like you memorize a melody or is it your fingers that kind of know just where to go next, mm -hmm. it, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you were also mentioned, like, just also giving yourself time after a practice session and have a goal of, like, what you wanted to memorize and then maybe come back to it later in that day and see, let the brain rest, let the brain start... Because when you're learning something new or starting to, or trying to retain something that has a good recall value, your brain is working so hard developing these uh, strands or these pathways in your brain, new ones. So it takes time, a couple hours, sometimes after sleeping and the next day to kind of get back and see where you are memorized. Yeah, and it's super important to give your, 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 your brain that time to work. Cause yeah. it, it works post, you know, there's a, there's a, in person, you're doing the work, and then there's post uh, processes happening, mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. without you knowing. And it's a good going... way to, you know, leave your flute out. Yeah. Play a little bit, like learn that first page, go do something else, come back, and try to play it without even looking. Yeah, without even and looking. see what what you retained, what you're yeah. not sure of, and yeah. then, then then go to the next one because yeah. like sometimes we we spend too much time in the beginning, then we're not very comfortable with yeah. the end. So make sure you. You do that, but yeah. yeah, and play it a lot. And at one yeah. point, it's gonna. A yeah. lot of it will, if you play it a lot, a lot of it will be memorized, and then you just have to put the pieces together. Yeah. There's just little transitions here and there that you'll you'll have to work on. Be yeah. like, oh, that's what goes there, and you'll be okay. Yeah, and not also just and also just to add, just when you do, uh, you know, pick up the flute and play it again and stuff, and you there's stuff missing and stuff. Don't be too hard on yourself because find out. You know, the good stuff that you have memorized, keep that there. You know that's always going to work. And then work on those things that aren't, you know. We kind of get a bit discouraged. We're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to memorize this or in time. Or I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I'm not progressing as fast as I should. But instead, you know, think more about what you did memorize and, and, and celebrate that. And then work on those other things and not mm. too much. You know, we tend to kind of work on the things that we're always comfortable with, you know, instead of the things that were uh, kind of... Uh, it makes us feel better. It makes us feel we're progressing. But then still those other sections might not be memorized. So, Yeah, work you know. on, on the stuff that you don't know, not yeah, the stuff that you know. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. also, like, it's... Um, I used to learn uh, things by heart a lot mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. memorize things. But I don't do it as much anymore. And that, that whole trend of memorizing yeah. came with lists. And um, we spend a lot of time memorizing things. Mm. I'm not sure it's always necessary. I used to do it all the time. Sure. But, yeah. you know, you don't have to worry. Like, no. people don't care that much. And it, it's good to, like, when I play in concert, I kind of know it by heart. But yeah. I still have my music. I usually put it kind of low so that the the music's not hiding yeah. myself from the, the yeah. public. Because they want to see your face and mm -hmm. they want to see your expression. And they, they came to see you. Totally. 
totally. as as well as to hear you, but they also you don't want the stand to be in the way of the sound or anything. Exactly. If you put it a bit low, a bit in front, and it's just there to uh, keep you um, feeling comfortable mm -hmm. and. I don't think it's a big deal. But like sometimes you really have to for a competition or whatever. Yeah. So Exactly. Yeah. And like record yourself, try to do it oh, and then yeah. you'll you'll see where you made mistakes and then you can work on those parts. Mm -hmm. Be your own teacher. Yeah. All those things help your brain Yeah. And like make connections. Teach sure. yourself. Like you would teach someone else. Like be mm -hmm. with someone else you'd be you'd be nice. You'd say, Oh, that's good. Now oh, let's work yeah. on this. Try to have the same type of way of treating yourself. Yeah. Be like, oh, that part was good. Now let's work on this part. And like, um, yeah, you know, being uh, disciplined, but also just uh, having, a, being nice to, to, yeah, yourself. to yourself. Not like, oh, what? I missed this part. Like, no, it's it's okay. Now we'll work on that part. Wow. Wow. That's such a fabulous way of thinking about that. That's so great. Cool. Uh, thanks, Shem. Uh, we just had, we had a super chat, a little tip oh, for the thank show. You thanks so much. so much. All those things really help us very much. And, um, I think this is about the end of the show a little bit. If, um, we're going to be back in June with, um, an interview with, um, one of the teachers from Berkeley where we, Emily went to in March. No, uh, yeah, yeah in, March, in March we went there. And, um, we're going to talk about, uh, the, the school there and also talk about her, her initiative and those types of things as well in june at the end of june we'll have another podcast and a couple other videos that are going to be coming out before then as well um what else is going to happen i think and then summer happens right everybody's right now doing exams and all those things so everybody's kind of winding down and so uh will we for the summer summer we're going to do some stuff but uh find all the information obviously here on on the youtube channel and uh, is there anything else you'd like to add emily well, if uh, you're looking for a flute method, you can check our website, musagi.com, I guess. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people have enjoyed it. And um, exactly. yeah, I guess in the summer, we'll make more videos. And yeah, more stuff is going to come out for yeah. sure. We'll also prepare you... things for you. So if, yeah. if people have special requests, it's going to be creating time soon. Yeah, <laughs> so it's it. their that's time it, to tell it. us. <laughs> Yeah. And also just practicing will be coming back soon as well. Um, Ryan just actually mentioned that just in the chat. Uh, I think we're going to start with maybe the Busser from uh, the French book, I think. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a request, by all means, uh, go leave it underneath the actual chat in this video. If you have a request for just practicing or anywhere, you know, yeah, we'll see all the comments and stuff. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we had Musigy where you can get the, the methods and also soon to be other new books as well, too, which will be fun uh m-u-s-o-g-y dot com also uh if you want to buy merch like shirts and stuff from our channel you can go to store.thefluechannel.com where we have a bunch of cool stuff including our flute lingering chart and um shirts water bottles all those types of things like that um and then also patreon if you want to help us directly all the time uh you know once a month you can uh, leave a a tip uh, there um monthly for us and that goes right to us and makes us uh, uh, have more time to make more videos and all those things things like that and uh, a little bit does go a long way so if you're ever considering it and if you have the the means to do it we would really appreciate that so yeah i think that's everything and we'll see everybody at uh, the end of june and watch out for new videos coming out soon thanks everybody thanks